Hello and welcome back to the module two of Google Certified Educator Level One. Today we are going to cover a topic which is actually uh, one of the most important app of G Suite for education. I had a lot of questions and sheets and forms and it's a really good idea to have a proper working practical knowledge of all these uh, you know, kind of small pointers I have created here. So in this module, we'll create a new sheet. We'll add some columns to it. Uh, like we are making some kind of a grade book, which will have a student name, English, math, science, total and average. We'll enter some dummy marks for the column English, maths and science. And then we'll use functions to create the total and average. We'll sort the average from largest to smallest or smallest to largest to show you how the sorting works. Then based on the data which we have here, we will create any two charts and understand the chart options. So let's get moving. So we can either, we can go on sheets by typing sheets.google.com. And for this particular activity, we'll click on a blank sheet. And let's name the sheet as class marks. Now, if you haven't used spreadsheet or sheets before, the data can be entered here in column format. So these are all columns. So you've got column A, B, C, D, E, F. So we will start by typing column as student name. Then we'll type English, math, science. Then we go on total and then we go on average. Now, in your scenario, you may have different columns. You feel free to add them from left to right. And the data in this particular spreadsheet or sheet would be entered from top to bottom. So the first row is your header, basically the explanation of each column. And the second row onwards, we will start putting name as student one, then student two, student three, student four. We'll try and add a little bit more students so that we have some data to demonstrate the charts and the averages properly. And here uh, we are supposed to enter marks out of 100. So let's enter some dummy marks here. And, uh, just try and enter across a different range if you can so that again the whole idea here is to understand how the data accurately accurately looks like when you have it in different uh, you know uh, like ranges so you know, there's a range of 80 there's 40 47 so let's quickly enter the data Here we come to science and we start entering data for science. Okay, so we are done here. So we will look, so here what we've done is we've created a new sheet. We've added the columns, student name, English, math, science, total average. We've entered the marks. So now we'll move to the fourth point use functions to get the total and the average and fill the columns up. So very simple. We click here at the first row, first uh, cell of the column total. You have a function here, which looks like this. So we click on that. 
we will click on that function we click on sum now as soon as we click on sum now if you see the syntax or the explanation on how this function looks like is it wants the range of values to calculate sum so we need to add up english math and science of the first column first row and three columns so we'll just select this so it shows b2 is to d2 so that's b and 2 that's c and 2 you can see two second row so b column uh, second row c column second row d column second row so it, it's naming it as b2 is to d2 that's the range press enter so it gives you total now you don't need to do that again and again for the rest of the uh, you know rows what you could do is if you click on the cell and uh, if you click on this dot here so as soon as you move your cursor on top of it it gives you a four headed cross uh, so you would just drag it down and then leave it so you see here that the range so when you see the range of uh, the student one is b2 is to d2 so of student two will be b3 is to d3 so it automatically changes the formula basically it's copying the formula and it is changing the rows simultaneously along with that okay so similarly we will solve the average so we'll click here we'll just go on function and this time we'll click on average and in average we will again select english maths and science we'll be careful don't select total because that's the total of these three subjects and we press enter so you get the average now you will follow the same procedure of clicking and dragging it down dragging it down to get you the average right so that covers up our fourth point so i could just do some formatting by clicking this row and making it bold so that it looks presentable now we look at the fifth option is sorting okay a lot of times you want to sort your data from largest to smallest or smallest to largest based on a particular column so what we'll do is there are two ways of doing it or i think there are two three ways of doing it so we'll follow the easier one first so we'll flick we'll take our cursor on e now as soon as you take your cursor on e you'll see a small triangle opens up here inverted triangle so just click on that and here so as soon as you click on e you have an option here short sort sheet from ascending or descending order so as soon as i click on descending order so you see the sheet gets sorted based on the total from highest to lowest so if we wish to sort this uh, from ascending to descending order first thing you have to do is don't forget to select the row and freeze the top row okay if you don't do that then what will happen even this gets sorted out uh, when you're performing an ascending order sort and now when you click on this column and you sort them ascending to descending or descending to ascending it works totally fine so let's try average so you could just click on the small triangle there and you could sort it accordingly as required so that completed our fifth uh, point so now let's quickly create two arrow two charts and understand the chart options now google sheets has made charts very simple to operate so if i just click 
anywhere in the chart or safer side what we do is we click the entire text and we'll just go on insert chart so it, it makes uh, it has created a chart of a uh, stacked column so let's do one thing let's create one more chart so we'll select the text again this time we we'll create insert chart again and what we'll do is from the chart type we will select a column chart okay so what it lets you do is it lets you see your data presented in a different manner in both the scenarios. And in case you wish to make any changes to this chart, like colors and you know, so you could just click on those three dots. If I just click on edit the chart. So again, it opens up the data for you. So you could just go on customize uh, customize the style, like what background color you require, the chart. So we'll just put it as class marks. So uh, we'll keep as title. So you see the title gets changed here. You can change the theme, you know, the fonts uh, as and when required. And uh, Suppose as a teacher, you feel that I like this chart and you wish to have a separate page for this chart created. So you have data on this chart and uh, you want a separate sheet created for this. So what we'll do is we'll again click on these three dots now and we will go on a link called as move to own sheet. So as soon as I click on that, you will see that this chart gets its own sheet uh, and with all the details uh, as you had put in there and it lets you, uh, it lets you see it more clearly, uh, you know, and uh, gives you a better kind of a presentation on the chart. And you could also click on edit the chart and continue the operations as you were performing earlier. So that's it. That completes our module two on sheets. I hope you enjoyed the session. Let's uh, see you again in the next session. Thank you so much.